dear uh, brothers and sisters it's wonderful to have uh, all of you here you know many of you have come from uh, different parts of the world i see someone from australia and someone from europe and someone from india and other parts of the world and so we welcome all of you here and uh, we hope that your stay here is going to be uh, a loving one a joyous one where uh, the the love that brought you here fulfills you tremendously and uh, you go back home uh, with taking a love back with you so it's, a, it's always a joy to uh, uh, be here with everyone and we pray that all good things are going to be coming to each and every one of you and we hope uh, you enjoy uh, your stay here and as we gather together uh, in this uh, beautiful uh, hall we want to focus on enhancing our understanding about the spiritual path and that generally happens uh, uh, when we have some questions and we get some answers and we are able to um, focus on different uh, um, facets uh, of life that we all have to deal with so we get many questions that come from all around the globe we we'll try to address a few of them so that uh, there's a better understanding of uh, the path and a better understanding of um, uh, how we put that into life because the question of one could maybe answer the questions of many many others how can we make time for our spiritual practices in us all um, question about balance um our path is a path of positive mysticism and in our path um, uh, the saints have said that um, uh, we live in this world uh, we need to do our very best in all facets of life whether it be physical mental emotional or spiritual and so uh, many times uh, uh, when we live a life uh, we find that many many of us uh, only take the physical and uh, the mental and the emotional parts to be very important and so we all uh, are involved in many many different activities okay? we feel that those activities are very very important and we all feel very busy in being able to uh, handle uh, all that comes from these uh, three arenas to us and generally uh, we neglect the spiritual because we can see it with our physical eyes we don't feel it with any of one our other uh, physical senses and so as a human being we are trying to focus on that we feel through our physical senses because we generally remain at that level most of the time and so when we live at that level then we uh, find that all of our time goes away in taking care of those three areas the physical the mental and the emotional ones when you look at your life you'll see that uh, most people you know go to work work is 8 hours have a lunch break by the time you're going to come back would be 10 hours 12 hours sometimes you have to work over time you got deadlines of your projects and you're putting more hours but I, anywhere from 8 to 12 hours is spent in that time uh, then the body needs rest so most people try to sleep for about 8 hours I mean 6 to 8 hours or uh, whatever and some of us may sleep for 10 hours too who knows so you know 12 you know, it all depends on uh, when and how but you know 8 is kind of considered to be a global number and then uh, the rest of the hours we're doing something we're getting dressed up you know we uh, uh, may be um, uh, watching TV we maybe want to go and play sports we maybe want to be with our relationships and go meet someone so so that's how most of our time goes because we feel they're important and then we say how can I balance my spiritual life so the great saints have said give 10% of your daily time he said two and a half hours how am I gonna get that 
But most people who come from India watch a three-hour movie. <laughs> in a head, the movies are smaller, maybe 90 minutes or, I don't know, 120 minutes or something. In India, most of the movies used to be three hours. They might be smaller. I, I, haven't, I don't know. I haven't watched one recently, so I don't know. Uh, but in the old times, when we were growing up, all the movies three hours. See, Godi, you're watching a movie for three hours. You don't feel anything. You find the time for it. You go to a sports game, whether it's a basketball game or something, you spend three hours there, or, or a football game, or a, any other game. Generally, it takes three hours before you see all the game to be ended. So we find time for those things. We go and talk to our friends, and we can talk for like six, eight hours. And we find time for it. So it's a question of setting our priorities. This is why it's generally recommended that meditate the first thing in the morning. That's the most important thing of the day to do. Just take care of it and then go to other things. So, so it, in life, you know, we all feel the pressure of work. We all feel we have too much to do. And then we neglect what we can't see or what we don't experience through our physical senses. And what is important to realize, the physical senses are only giving us inputs which are coming from the physical world and we need to go into the spiritual world. If we stay in the physical world, then we'll be thinking of the mental and the emotional and the physical aspect of life. But we need to rise above that. That will only happen as we meditate. And if we find the time, we realize that we are able to spend the time easily. Whether we do it uh, once a day, whether we do it two, three times a day, uh, we can definitely find the time. Two and a half hours is not that long when you come to think of it. Um, it is said that most people are spending about five hours on their phones these days. So, out of those five, if you cut that into half, you're done. <laughs> and that, you know, how many people today feel, if you get a message, you have to respond right away, otherwise you feel very edgy. You say, I haven't responded, I haven't responded. You're up at two o'clock in the morning answering emails of all day long, because you feel it's important to respond to them. Do you feel the need to meditate at that time? No. You think, I need to answer this guy, I need to answer that guy, I need to answer that guy. Why? Because we feel, okay, that's important, that's where our time is going. So we need to prioritize. And, and once we do set the time for our spiritual practices, then we realize that the concentration that we gain in the process of getting spiritual awareness, or going on the spiritual journey, that that concentration is going to make us be in a state where our other work is going to happen faster and we're going to save time there and so we'll have more time to spend in our spiritual practices. Because as we meditate, as the concentration powers get better, we get more efficient in whatever we do, so everything else takes a little less. And so it's just a question of prioritizing and if we do that, then we'll be able to uh, deal with uh, the difficulties that we all think are coming to us because uh, our mundane affairs are taking preferences over our spiritual activities. How can we overcome difficulties in our meditation practice? The key is to be able to um, make sure that each aspect of the meditative process is correct, is done properly. Think about a recipe. Let's say we're going to make a cauliflower and potato sabji. And then they say you have to do it like this. You have to get, uh, whether there's ghee or butter or, you know, all these fancy new butters which are out there, veggie butters or whatever. You can put it in a frying pan, let it warm up. You can chop the onions in the meantime. Put that many onions in there. Put these many tomatoes in there. And then zip, 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 zip and put a little salt and put a little pepper and to throw in some curry powder and uh, I don't, I don't use my recipe, I'm just making it up.
<laughs> when they're all mixed up, throw in the, you know, maybe throw in the potatoes before you throw in the cauliflower. I don't know which one cooks better, if you cook it. And then you go zip, 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 and you know, in the meantime, you've chopped the, you know, ginger in there and thrown that too. And you do it at the right process, okay? Then, when you eat the vegetable, it's going to be delicious, okay? But then, let's say, you say, uh, by chance, you forget putting the salt in there, okay? And you put everything else. And you say, what is this thing? It's like, it doesn't taste good, right? Just by not putting one ingredient properly, you mess up the whole thing, okay? Let's say you forgot about tomatoes. And let's say you put half the onions and not as much as the recipe is saying you won't get the taste that you really should be getting. And you will feel things are not working as they should. Okay. It's the same thing with meditation. There are many parts, if you look at the meditative process, there are many parts of it. First, we need to find a quiet place to meditate. So the place should be quiet. Then, as we sit, we have to make sure that as we close our eyes, that our gaze needs to be straight. So the eyeballs are not going up. So we need to practice to be able to do that. You know, you put a spot on the wall, look at it for a minute to close the eyes so your eyes get used to uh, being straight. You do it for a month, two months, three months, and then you, it works for you. Then, as you as you sit to meditate, you need to be able to focus on your simran, like repeating God's name. So that's not a time to think attention. That's not a time to be thinking about this thing or that thing. That. So you need to practice that. So you don't let the thoughts come into your system as you're, um, um, as you're repeating the God's name. And you need to be not sitting with expectation. Today I'm going to fly into the third region. Or I want to see the red rising sun. Or I want to be experiencing this. And that. So you don't want to sit with any anticipations and throwing that into your system, you should let God's will reveal of itself the way it does. Okay? So there are many parts to the meditative process. And then those parts need to be all falling in place, just like all aspects of a recipe need to be done properly for us to get a good dish up. So same thing with meditation. Every aspect of the meditation process needs to be corrected. So now, if, if someone says that their meditations are not going good, they should look at each aspect of their meditation, they should analyze that, they should work at one at a time. If, if, if they are not finding a quiet place to sit, they got to find a quiet place to sit. They want to make sure that the place is quiet. If uh, the gaze is not proper, they need to fix so the gaze is straight. If uh, there are other aspects of that process that are not being handled properly, we need to work at them one by one, fix one, fix the second one, fix the third one, and then as all of them will get fixed, then you'll find that your meditation is going to be well. So the key is to look at the way we meditate, to, to fix each aspect of the meditative process, and then we'll be in a state where uh, we'll be able to rise above physical body consciousness. How can we derive maximum benefit from being in the physical presence of the spiritual master? Sankar Kripal Singh Ji Maharaj said that one third of spirituality is coming uh, through the word of mouth. Uh, the teaching that we get by reading and by listening to others and by going to satsang and by able to you know, talk with others with stories of grace and other things like that. Uh, which, which which help us physically, which help us mentally to be understanding the spiritual path. So the theoretical part of the path is understood through this process. But then uh, he also said that two-thirds of spirituality comes through the radiation. When he says through the eyes of the uh, physical spiritual master, he's talking about radiation, the, the spiritual radiation which is coming to us as we are in the physical presence of the spiritual master. And so, when we are in the physical presence, then what happens is that the spiritual radiation is coming to us equally. If we are, let's say, in a hall or we are in the satsang grounds, 
irrespective of where we sit, whether we're sitting in the front, whether we're sitting on the left, whether we sit in the back, whether we sit on the right, it doesn't matter. The spiritual radiation is coming to each and everyone. Just like when the sun comes out, the sun comes out for the whole uh, humanity. Okay. Now, if you put a shade on yourself, then the sunlight is not going to help you. Okay. If you have glasses on, you won't see um, the beauty of the sunlight. Okay. If you put like a curtain in front of you, you can make not see any sunlight at all. So there are various um, objects that we as human beings put between the sun and ourselves, and so we only see that aspect of the sun. But the sun is coming equally to everyone. And at the same time, someone could have glasses, sunglasses, I mean, and they, their sight would be one way. Another person has nothing on their eyes, so they see the whole radiance of the sun. Other people might put a whole curtain, or you could put a tent inside. It could be all dark. Okay. But the sun is out there. So it's for us to make use of the radiance of the sun. It's the same thing that happens in a satsang or when we are in the physical presence of the physical spiritual master. The spiritual radiation coming to each and every one of us. And when they come to us, it is for us to be receptive, to be able to partake of it. If we are not receptive, it's going to bounce off us. We're not going to be able to experience all that we can. And so when we are in the satsang, then we should not be thinking about anything else. What kills us is our thoughts. We all have thoughts. We could be sitting there and all of a sudden we think, oh, I have to take my child to the doctor. Yeah. Just that one thought we create so much. When do I go? Who's going to drive? Will we have the car in the home? Will the child be on time? Is the doctor going to be time? We have to wait like half an hour in the room. Fifty million other thoughts come from just one thought. So the key is to get to a state where we have no thoughts. Because yeah. they are what are impediments to our gaining when we are in the physical presence of the physical spiritual master. So for us to gain, we need to be sure that when we are there, because the radiation is coming to each and every one of us, and it's it's uh, this is why many times when we go to satsang, we're asked that we are, eyes should be glued to the eyes of the physical master, because those are the sources from where the radiation comes. But, but uh, sometimes you feel, oh, there's a tall guy sitting in front of me, and I can't see the whole thing. It doesn't matter. No tall person's body can stop that from penetrating through. Okay. And the tall person is thinking of something else, definitely goes more quickly through them. So, so we could be, and it's a question of where our attention is, a question of where our focus is. So the key is to be focused on being able to gain from being there. And, and uh, when we do that, then we'll find that we are gaining totally. Just the spiritual radiation is always there. The more receptive we are, the more we'll gain from it. And, and two-thirds of the spiritual experience is, is uh, coming when we are in that physical presence. And this is why Kabir Sahib has said, don't get darshan of the spiritual master once a day, get it thousands a day. Because, you know, from the old times, the saints realized that themselves and they wanted their disciples and others to realize that too. That we as human beings create difficulties for ourselves. Okay? We're creating karma left and right. You know? and, and, and we don't even realize what, we, what damage we are bringing to ourselves. But when we are in the spiritual radiation field, then that karma is getting wiped out. Things are getting cleaned up. We are getting to more pure state, and we want to be in that pure state for us to be able to reach our goals. So a lot of emphasis has been put in that physical um, uh, darshan, or in the in being in the physical presence. And then, and, and this is why Sankar Kripal Singh Ji Maharaj, to make that point very clear, said that two-thirds of spirituality is coming from that area. I mean, we all think we can read everything and we can see everything. In this day and age, we all are thinking, you know, it's like um, we all can learn everything on our own. Okay? 
And so we think we can read the books, we can get information from the internet, we can get information here, we can talk to people and then we know it all. But that's all, that's all theoretical stuff. You need to have the experience and none of that can give you any experience. The experience will come as you sit to meditate. If some of you have maybe been to some of the programs or some of the satsangs of Sant Kipal Singh Ji Maharaj or satsangs of Sant Darshan Singh Ji Maharaj, you've seen right in the satsang there, there are some people who, who have experiences beyond the physical. And so their experience is spiritual because their attention was so glued, they, they gained everything that they got in and so they went in, in, on the spiritual journey. Okay? And this has happened in many satsangs. So it's a question of us being receptive. The more receptive we are, the more we can gain from that spiritual radiation and, and the, the better our spiritual journey would be. What is the nature of attachment? And is attachment to people a deterrent on the spiritual path? You know, attachment is uh, very interesting. Uh, most people think of attachment as being attached to uh, material things. We could be attached to a car, we want to clean it up, we don't want anyone to dirty the car, kids can't have popcorn in the car, no ice cream, no nothing, you know. And, and why? Because we're attached, we don't want the car to get spoiled. We could be attached to our computers, everyone's attached to their phones these days. Um, uh, most people think of attachment as being attached to something, another physical object. Okay? You know, our path is a path of positive mysticism. Our path is not one which tells us to negate life. So the path is not telling us, leave your home, leave your society, leave your families, go to the mountains or caves and just sit and meditate. 24 hours a day. So our path believes in positive mysticism that we should live with our families in our environment, support everyone because we have karmas with everyone that we connect with in our life and that needs to be wiped out so that we can get to a state of ne karma, no karmas. Okay? That's why we're asked to stay in the environment so that if we have karma with A, B, C, D, E, that can be wiped out in this lifetime. So for us to realize that, that when we live together, we're going to have some attachment to the people that we live with, with our spouses, with our parents, with our children, with our siblings, with our people in our neighborhoods, uncle and aunt, grandparents, people at work, because we, we talk to them, we meet with them, we relate to them, so there's bound to be some kind of attachment. Okay? So attachment at that human level, there's nothing wrong with it. It's only if that attachment gets to a point where we are so attached that we neglect other things, then it's bad. Okay. So, so because we are asked to live in the society, there has to be some interaction with other human beings. So depending on the kind of interaction, the kind of attachment we have to them, some kind of relationship we have to them with them, but no relationship or no attachment should be such that everything else suffers in the process. And so, what is very important to understand about attachment is that attachment at the human level is okay. There's nothing wrong with attachment between human beings. But we need to prioritize how much time are we giving there because our main attention has to be in a spiritual development. You know, uh, some Darshan Singh Ji Maharaj would often talk about a husband and wife helping each other to go on the spiritual path. And they say both of their attention should be in that direction, in one direction, and that direction to, should be towards God. So, so as human beings, and, and as, let's say, husband and wives, or children and parents or siblings, we can help each other go on the spiritual path. Because let's say there's a family. And if in the family, you know, everyone says, okay, let us meditate at this time, then we'll get in the habit. And so we can all be helping to say, hey, we need to meditate, this is important, we need to be ethical. So we all can help each other, so there's no restriction, or there's nothing which says, 
we should not have a relationship with others. Okay. Uh, but we should realize that if attachment gets to a point where so much of our time goes into that attachment, let's say if you have a car, and if you take two hours to just keep the car clean and this and that, you might as well meditate for two hours. So we have to balance our spiritual practices with what we do with any attachment. But any attachment to others is correct. There's nothing wrong with it. So let us uh, meditate for a few minutes. Uh, please sit as comfortably as you can. Close your eyes very gently, just like you close them when you go to sleep. Your eyeballs should be straight, focus eight or ten inches in front of you. And as you close your eyes, uh, those of you who have been initiated in the mysteries of the beyond, please do your simran. And those of you who are new here, please repeat any name of God that you feel comfortable with. This repetition of God's name should be done mentally and not out loud. I uh, pray to God Almighty and to the three great spiritual masters of the past century, Hazur Baba Savan Singh Ji Maharaj, Param Sant Kapal Singh Ji Maharaj, and Dhyal Prasant Darshan Singh Ji Maharaj, to help each and every one of us connect with the divine power within and to experience the divine light in his effulgence. So we'll be sitting for a few minutes. I'll be getting you out of this meditative state at that time. And my best wishes are with each and every one of you.
Please leave off. Uh, please leave off.